Hi, I'm Martin and uh, this is my crazy coffin for my last journey. <laughs> Book early. Martin Brunschweiler, the owner of this beer bottle on wheels, is a man with a thirst for life. Yet, he's more ready for death than most. Because this is the vehicle Martin Brunschweiler plans to take when he'll meet his maker. It's strange, but uh, no, it's very comfortable. You know, it's, I know it, it, probably, um, it probably seems, I don't know, spooky for some people, but it doesn't, it doesn't worry me. I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's something that will happen to everybody, so you have to just, <laughs> it's a reality, <laughs> just take the rough with the smooth. Beer has played a major role in his life. He owns a brewery on the Isle of Man. 30 years ago, his brother built him the perfect car by converting an old Citroën into a beer bottle on wheels. It's famous on the island. When I was very young, my brother and I, um, we saw there's a very old um, bottle car which, you, um, which we saw in, um, in London, and it was from the 1920s on a Rolls-Royce uh, and it had a bass, bass beer was the brand. And um, no, when, when I started brewing, my brother and I, we started talking about it would be nice to, uh, to do something similar. And because he knew about citrons and he knew about how to uh, convert, and he was a, he's a good mechanic. And uh, now we came up with the idea of making a Bushies bottle car. Little did he know that his bottle car would end up providing the inspiration for his own coffin. For years, he just enjoyed driving his eye-catching vehicle around the island. Then, one day, he read an article in the newspaper about a company that crafted crazy coffins and ordered his own custom-made one. It is a work of art, and uh, oh, I feel very proud to, uh, to have this as my, uh, as my final vehicle. I love, I love these linings as well. It's very... Uh, yeah, it's like lu lu luxury. <laughs> he had his custom coffin made six years ago. You can see it's been made by craftsmen. Um, all the individual little details on the wood, um, everything really, these little windscreen wipers, the mirrors. I love the painting. It's all been painted by hand. I love the whole thing. It's about 50-50 that Half the people think it's, it's fine and they think it's funny and uh, same as me, but the other half, they th a lot of people think it's, they don't like it and they think it's a bit morbid, it's a bit, uh, um, I don't know, disrespectful. They think uh, you should be more serious about uh, how you go, but we're all different, so. <laughs> His unusual coffin was crafted in Nottingham. Hello, I'm John and I make coffins for a living. Um, normal standard coffins and crazy coffins. Here at coffin manufacturer Vic Fern, they've created several hundred unique designs under the name Crazy Coffins. Together with his colleagues, John Vos designs and builds these models, which are bound to turn heads at the cemetery. This is going to be an airplane. A handmade original like this costs between 1,000 and 3,500 euros, depending on the amount of work that goes into it. I think the, the most technical one is the Rolls-Royce, um, because obviously all like even the mud guards, we had to make form as to, to bend the ply round and cramp them and then glue them and then when the glue would dry, we, we could take them off the formers. So a lot of work went into that, a lot of time, um, a lot of thought, and, and again, dragging measurements off the internet and scaling things down to make it look like the real thing, but in miniature form. He loved the car so much, he wanted to be buried in it, so this was um, the closest he would get to be buried in it. Yeah, so really good one. The Rolls-Royce owner has since been buried in the original replica of his luxury car.
Within the storeroom, there are copies of particularly inventive coffins, as well as original models still waiting to be used. The coffins help mourners identify what the dearly departed loved most in life, or what his or her unfulfilled dream was. Like this replica of a canal boat, the client it was made for could never afford to buy a real one. Well, this is actually a viewing win window. Um, so the body would be in here, the head would be there. And if the family wanted to view the body, um, they could see um, the face. So it functions like a proper canal boat. Unfortunately, that's our business. Um, you know, uh, someone's misfortune is, is our good fortune, really, in a way. But um, it's a sad fact of life. But why not make a crazy coffin? It's, it's unique, it's a talking point, um, and, and it represents the person who's going in it, their interest or hobbies or what they're about. So yeah, it's really nice to, to, to do something different like this. Office manager Ursula Williams is the heart and soul of the company. She explains why Britain doesn't have such strict laws about how human remains must be handled and why people here can be buried in the craziest of coffins. Great Britain is a peculiar place. It's because we didn't ever have Napoleon, for example, who codified everything in France. In France, everything is laid down and there are laws and everybody accepts those laws. Never happened here. It was always chaos and it continues to be chaos, which means you can pretty much do what you like if you don't want to have a coffin at all. You don't have to have one. A bed sheet will do perfectly well. If you, if you wish to be buried in your backyard, you can be. You can get permission for that. I mean, there are certain things you have to be a little careful of, like rivers and watercourses, but there's no regulation. Coffin manufacturer Vic Fern was originally a combination of carpentry firm and undertaker. Around two decades ago, they noticed a sharp increase in the demand for personalized coffins. At first, they painted designs on standard caskets. Then came their first commission for a figurative coffin. Making these custom-made caskets soon became a major part of their business and a satisfying one. It is rewarding because it's a team effort. It's, it's rewarding making them because we all have to sit down and think and have a meeting about it and lots of different people are involved. And it's rewarding having people in the factory who can do things which are exciting and can look wonderful and, get, and they have an opportunity to show what they can do. So to that extent, it's rewarding. The creativity is rewarding for the mem people who work for us. And it's rewarding for us working with families and l enabling them to have something meaningful. When it comes to their work, all of the coffin makers are ambitious and exacting. Take this airplane coffin, for example. The guy who ordered this was a big Blackpool fan. That's his uh, football club uh, logo. Um, He's very much alive, and he's been on quite a few exhibitions with us. And yet, the coffin makers weren't completely happy with the debut model. So, John Vos is crafting a modified version. We was happy with it, but we felt it could be better. Um, so, we're making a better version of his first coffin. Well, basically with the chass chassis and the, the front, we've improved the, the front end of it where it's painted on the grill. We've actually made the grill on the, the, the Mark II. Um, the propellers a better shape. Um, even the aeroplane is a more refined shape uh, than this one. But nevertheless, still a, a fun, crazy coffin. But not every coffin has an amusing backstory. Sometimes the coffin makers get choked up, especially when it comes to children. Like when the aunt of a young boy who just died brought a personal item that had belonged to her nephew. It was a young child's musical instrument, and then you know that the child has sadly passed away and we didn't have very long to make this. Um, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's quite sad. The resulting guitar-shaped coffin is the largest one he and his colleagues have ever made. 
obviously the coffin is only half of the um, size. The neck actually detaches. Yeah. Um, obviously, we, you can't get graves as long as this. So yeah, we do, the, we do take the um, neck of the coffin off. It is detachable. I think it's therapeutic. If you are really doing something, that you feel the person who's died would have loved. You're making some positive act towards celebrating that person. And there wouldn't be anyone at the funeral that didn't know why that coffin was the shape it is. Weeks of work go into making each custom-made coffin, all just for a few brief moments at the funeral. I personally think it's a shame to burn them. You know, there's a lot of time uh, goes into each one of these coffins, a lot of thought um, and a lot of man hours to make them as good as we do. So yeah, it is a shame really if, we, if, if they do get burned, but I suppose that's what, you know, has to happen really. So it's good Martin Brunschweiler's getting some mileage out of his beer bottle coffin while he's still alive. His casket was really made to measure. They wanted to know how tall I was, how wide, and um, I think they were the main things. I don't think the, uh, the weight makes much difference, but now obviously if, if I get much bigger, then uh, it could become a problem, but I'm hoping that won't be, uh, that won't be. I, I have to watch my weight. I, I, have, I mustn't drink too much beer. <laughs> John Vos has yet to make a coffin for himself, but he does have something in mind. If I could make one, it'd probably be a Ferrari racing car. I'm into Ferraris, um, but um, yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day I could make myself one. It'd be fun. At first, Martin Brunschweiler was hesitant to tell his wife about his funeral plans, but then he created an exhibition about his brewery and wanted to exhibit the coffin. My wife doesn't like it. She thinks, um, she thinks it's morbid. She doesn't like to think about these things. I like to think that when I do go, um, there'll be a beer for everybody, all my friends and anybody I know, so I'll make sure that there's plenty of beer available. But uh, no, I just think it's nice if we can uh, um, just make it as, as easy going as possible. He's made his final arrangements, but Martin Brunschweiler hopes to be around for a while yet. For now, the beer coffin is for demonstration purposes only.